I think we've got a pretty wide open slate for tonight in MLB DFS, where there are a decent number of pitchers you could talk yourself being into as being the top arm of the night. There is a value play I truly don't mind. So a pretty wide open slate. And that's a good thing because it allows you to differentiate without being dumb. It allows you to follow wherever your process leads you. And I think feel pretty good about that about that almost regardless we're going to break down where my process leads me for today which guys i think could be good despite potentially not being the most popular plays in the slate and get you ready for a friday night in mlb dfs welcome on into the solo shop that's right here on the fanduel podcast network and numberfire.com my name is jim sonis i am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire here to break down friday's 13 game main slate with locks up for 705 p.m eastern for today, the lone weather note on this slate outside of smoke, which I can't really track personally, so hopefully no smoke issues for today, but there is a chance of rain in Baltimore for the Orioles and the Royals. I have interest in that game from a pitching perspective, weirdly, given those two teams involved, uh, but I think they should be good to go, at least based on the initial read. So I would check back on that game later on, make sure the forecast has not changed and they're good to play that game. If they are, we'll be talking about that game in the pitching section in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it, you can find us there. While you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well, both on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. We appreciate you as always. Have you ever started a player in your fantasy football lineup who scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20? Well, with FanDuel's NFL best ball drafts, you don't have to worry about that. Draft your team, and each week the highest scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long. Leagues can be free to play or for money and range from three to 12 players. The NFL season will be here before you know it. So head to FanDuel today and get in on the action. Age and location restrictions apply. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. We have got uh, a, again, pretty fun pitching pool for today. Begins at the top with Christian Javier with a salary of $10,800, followed by Luis Castillo at 10-6. Garrett Cole facing the Red Sox at 10-5. Marcus Stroman out in San Francisco at 10-2. Shohei Otani facing Castillo at 10,000. Dylan Cease against the Marlins, 98. Tyler Wells up to 97. Justified, I think. Sonny Gray at 96. You Darvish at Coors Field, 95, with Logan Allen at 93. Ayuri Perez facing the White Sox, 92. Then we have Anthony DeSclafani, Ben Lively, Yusei Kikuchi, Adrian Hauser, Jordan Montgomery, Tyler McGill, and Josiah Gray, and also Daniel Lynch as the guys at $8,000 or higher for tonight. So, as mentioned, a lot of ways you could play this slate for today. And I think the most interesting salary there is Shohei Otani, because $10,000 for him on FanDuel is not bad at all. He's facing the Mariners, and that's not the best matchup, but I still want to be on him tonight. Otani has had some hiccups recently, which may be why that salary is reduced. He let up five earned runs his last time out against Houston, and I used him there, so that was not super enjoyable, but still, he did go six innings and get six strikeouts. There was nothing of massive concern inside his profile. We have seen Otani alter his approach a bit. He's been throwing more sinkers and fewer sliders his past five starts. And from a DFS perspective, that's not a swap you want because sinkers are bad for strikeouts and sliders are good. It's still been pretty solid for Otani in this time. He has a 3.46 skill interactive ERA. Strikeout rate is 28% with allow allowing just a 31% hard hit rate. So those numbers are all still good, even if they're not quite prime Otani. And the Angels do let Otani go super deep in games. So even with more sinkers and a lowered strikeout rate, Otani has still averaged 7.4 strikeouts per game in this span. I haven't projected for 7.7 .7 tonight because the Mariners are a team that is willing to strike out. So Otani, to me, is the top pitcher of the night and a guy I do feel good about despite some concerns around his recent pitch mix. Number two pitcher behind Otani Maybe a bit of a surprise, but it is a guy who is pitching fantastic right now. And that guy is Tyler Wells. I think he's well worth his salary at 97 and a guy I want to be on for tonight. Wells is facing the Royals. And that's a higher strikeout matchup than they used to be. They have a 24% strikeout rate against righties, and that's a boost for Wells for sure. But I also just generally like what Wells is doing right now. He said publicly he's been making a more concerted effort to get strikeouts. 
And over his past six starts, we've seen him use fewer curveballs. And the curveball is actually a pretty low whiff pitch for him. According to Baseball Savant, it's actually the lowest whiff rate for him of any pitch outside of his cutter. So fewer curveballs is a good swap for Wells to make in terms of strikeouts. That, combined with his new strikeout-centric mindset, has led to a spike, not surprisingly. In this six-start sample, Tyler Wells has a 32% strikeout rate with a 3.17 skill interactive ERA. He has had seven plus strikeouts in five consecutive starts, and he had nine last time out. We've also seen Wells get 100 plus pitches in two consecutive starts. And this all aligns with the results too, because those have been pretty solid, which means I think he'll keep this approach going as long as those results stay good. I am super high on Wells. I am not sure if people will be as keen to buy into him, especially on a slate where we have Otani, Castillo, Javier, Cole, all those names. That pushes me towards taking the risk on Wells at 97. It's a risk because it's a small sample, but I think it's worth it. So to me, it's Otani 1, Tyler Wells 2, and the hope for me is that people are not super into Wells given how much that salary has risen as of late. The value play is actually in that exact same game. If you want to spend down... I like Daniel Lynch at $8,000 as my favorite value for tonight. This means he's facing the Orioles, and I don't want to do that because they are a very tough team for a lefty to face, so 115 at WRC plus there. But Lynch has looked good coming back from a shoulder injury. In two starts, he has a 13% swinging strike rate. He made four starts in AAA on his rehab stint. His strikeout rate down there was 19.2%. And this is really a return to previous form for Lynch because in the minors, he always got whiffs and converted them into strikeouts. He has not translated that to the majors as of yet. But this year, Lynch has changed the way he's throwing his slider. It's either, if you look at fan graphs it's, or pitch info, it's a cutter. Baseball savant, it's still a slider, but it's a harder slider. So it's a distinct pitch from what he was throwing last year. Velo is higher, and that pitch is getting ground balls. His big issue before was hard contact, and... I'm curious if this retooled slider will help Lynch mitigate the hard contact. It has helped so far, but it is also just a sample of 60 pitches. But in those first two starts off the IL, Lynch has six and seven strikeouts respectively. Both those were admittedly great matchups for a lefty, and this is not bad against the Orioles. So there is a lot of risk here, but for $8,000 on a Coors Field slate, I'm okay with taking on some risk. So I like Lynch. I'll give him a spin for tonight. So to me, the top pitchers in the stud tier, Otani, one at 10,000, Wells, two at 97, and then the top value in that same game is Daniel Lynch. Again, check back on the weather at Baltimore to make sure they are good to go there. Part of the incentive to spend down a bit for tonight is because we do have a Coors Field game, and it's the Padres there. The Padres facing Austin Gomber. Gomber is struggling. The Padres have hit lefties well, so I do think it's a good thing to be high on the Padres for tonight. Not a super bold claim given they're at uh, Coors Field, but still, I think it is worth reiterating. They good. We want them. Gomber's ERA this year is 6.99 across the full season. His expected ERA is 7.24. He's been throwing his curveball harder or harder for his past eight starts, and that hasn't made a big difference. His skill interactive ERA is 5.16 in that time with a 47% hard hit rate and just a 15% strikeout rate. So even with the results at times being better for Gomber, it's still looking pretty fu fruitful to stack against him. The Padres have a 114 WRC plus against lefties with a 190 ISO, and now they get a good matchup at Coors Field. I think we should just take the path of least resistance and stack them here. So the Padres, to me, a very fine stack. The confliction, conflict, the whatever, the, conf the conflict that I have with stacking the Padres is I'm still a bit skeptical of Gary Sanchez, what he's been doing. He's been fantastic so far in the majors, but he was not doing this in AAA for the four different AAA teams he played for. He has twice as many homers in the big leagues as he did in AAA across all stops. His salary is 32. That does help a lot, where it means that Fandle also has not bought in yet, so the salary is still pretty reasonable. Sanchez likely to bat at a pretty good spot in the order, so I'm skeptical, but cleanup batter or guy batting fifth, Ackworth Field for 32, who has hit well in the majors in a small sample, you could do worse. So although I'm skeptical, probably will still be there for tonight out of necessity uh, in order to make these Padre sacks a bit easier to get to from a salary perspective. 
Outside of Coors Field, the Brewers are facing the Oakland A's, uh, starting a series against them, which means they are the next team to get to face that very, very giving bullpen. Luis Medina will start for the A's tonight, and I think both aspects, the Medina aspect and the bullpen aspect, should put us in the Brewers for stacking. Medina, a rough go of it so far. ERA is 8.19. His expected ERA is 6.51. That number's high largely because his hard hit rate is 43%. The numbers in AAA were not ideal either for Medina. So I think the Brewers should be able to get to him. And then there's the bullpen. We've talked a lot about the bullpen here on the show, but the active roster skill interactive ERA, that bullpen is 4.77, which means the Brewers can score points all game long. That's not true for all stacks on each slate. So I think there's a lot to like in that regard. I think the Brewers are a prime stack. And if it weren't a Coors Field sta- slate, I think they'd be probably number one. So feeling really good about the Brewers for today. And they're also getting healthier between Willie Adamas coming back and Luis Arias coming back. But also Christian Yelich slowly perking back up. His ISO against righties of the past month is 186, which is better than it was. His fly ball rate back up to 30%. That's still lower than he'd like it to be. Quite a bit lower, but better than it was. And of course, he will steal bases too. I have not been super high on Yelich for a couple years now, but it's getting better. Definitely getting better. And especially now with how prevalent stolen bases are, that does up his appeal too. So I'm higher on Yelich now than I was before. He is the highest salary guy in the stack. You can get Rowdy Telez for $2,900, which is super attractive. So I think the Brewers do make a lot of sense. Not super hard to get to from a salary perspective. So even with Rowdy Telez struggling right now, I want to be on the Brewers personally against uh, the A's and Luis Medina. For our third stack, we're going to go to Atlanta. Atlanta, the Braves facing Josiah Gray, who's had awesome results recently. But there are some issues under the hood, and I think that those allow us to stack the Braves here. Across his past eight starts, Gray has gone back to his forcing fastball a bit more. His ERA at that time is 2.78. and an eight-start sample, ERA is not stable yet, but it's starting to get closer to where it's like, okay, we can't fully ignore that. He hasn't let up more than four earned runs in any game. So he's had great results, decently large sample, but the peripherals are still a bit rough and the matchups have been pretty easy in that time. Across that span, Gray has a 5.14 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 20% with a 12% walk rate. He's letting up a 41% hard hit rate and he had been getting a lot better in that regard, but that has slipped. And that's despite plus matchups, because across his past four starts, he has faced the Marlins, the Tigers, and the Royals. There was a tougher start in there, too, but those are three plus matchups. So I'm curious what his peripherals would look like if he had been facing tougher teams. So I'm okay betting on regression here and stacking the Braves, even though Gray has had awesome results as of late. And in the stack, I'm okay using either righties or lefties. Gray's strikeout rate is lower against righties, but the ground ball rate is also higher there. So lefties have not hit him well so far, especially not hitting for power. But I think those numbers will improve as we expand the sample. So I'm not going to worry too much about uh, where they're at right now. I think both handednesses are in play when stacking against Gray with the Braves for tonight. So top stacks of the day going to be the Padres at Coors Field, the Brewers against the A's, and the Braves in Atlanta. Things to watch on this slate. Dylan Cease gets a fantastic matchup at home. He's facing the Marlins, and I love that matchup and would love to be here. But I still don't think Cease is fully back yet. Even in plus matchups, he's had issues. He's a consideration tonight due to the matchup, but I'm not fully, fully in on him yet. I kind of want to see a bit more on Cease before I treat him as being last year's Dylan Cease once again. Yusei Kikuchi's facing the Twins. He's still letting up a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls, and I think that puts one-offs very much in play. The Twins are a bit banged up, which is why they're not a full stack. But uh, if Jorge Polanco can play, he got banged up yesterday. Uh, If he can go, he hits lefties well. Carlos Correa hit a bomb this week, so maybe he's getting back. Royce Lewis struggling so far. This is all why uh, I haven't gotten to a full stack here. But I think Lewis, Correa, Polanco, guys like that can at least be considerations for one-offs for tonight. Finally, the Mets are facing Rich Hill, who is letting up a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls recently. So I think that puts the Nets in play for one-offs or for potentially a full stack. The overall numbers for Hill have been fine, but that hard contact is tough to turn down. So the Mets, to me, a stacking consideration or a spot to turn for one-offs for filling out your lineups. 
Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for today. I don't think I've gotten to use Fernando Tatis Jr. as a home run call yet, but he's at Coors, 11 bo- bombs already so far. So we'll go Tatis as a boring home run call because I feel like it. For the fun one, we'll go a lot more fun. And this one is fun because I'm excited that he's back in the majors. John Singleton is back with the Brewers, or I guess up with the Brewers now. And I've always felt kind of bad for him given the trajectory after he got that huge contract in Houston. I'm glad he got his money, uh, but... I'm glad to see him back in the majors, probably going to bat in the bottom third of the order, but salary is $2,200. He hit the ball pretty well in AAA. So let's go John Singleton as a welcome back to the big leagues uh, kind of thing. Home run calls for today for Nando Tatis and John Singleton with the Brewers. That's all we got here for today on uh, the main slate for Friday night. If you want some thoughts on uh, strikeout props for today, we're going to have Pitching Ninja, Rob Friedman over on Covering the Spread. Get that by searching for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And as with the solo shot, you can also get Covering the Spread over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes. J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again on Monday to break down that slate. Have a fantastic weekend. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.